Growing up, I was told that I would never amount to a damn thing. I lacked self-esteem and I saw no value in myself. There were times when I considered suicide. I was clinically depressed and I had no one in whom to confide. My response was to run away from the pain, the hurt, and the fear, and I learned to create a sense of value through mentoring relationships. Amazingly, although I had been abused by my father, my best mentors were male superiors. I found my first paid job in a local paper. People read the paper in those days. I had no resume, but I placed a call. I must have nailed the conversation because Philip Kushner, an accountant and not the famous author, hired me to work for him on Saturdays from 8.30 through 4.30. My job was to reconcile his receivables. At that time, I had no idea what receivables were, and I was not fond of math. I did, however, have spunk and drive, two assets that have remained my strong points throughout life. Mr. K understood that I had no knowledge of a 10-key adding machine, but he gave me a chance. He assigned me to a desk and supplied dozens of shoeboxes of receipts from what looked like every small corner bar in Philadelphia. It sounds simple enough or complex to those who are accustomed to spreadsheets and functions performed by computers instead of the five digits on one's right hand. Mr. K taught me the process by insisting that I use the touch technique, similar to touch typing, meaning that I could not look at the keys. It took a while to train my numb fingers to do what I needed them to do, but I mastered that technique and became, in his words, his most resolute employee and a quick learner. He gave me a chance, as well as an amazing recommendation for nursing school. I worked for Mr. K for two years and I learned so much more than the 10 key adding machine. I learned tenacity, resilience, and the thrill of completion. Years later, I tried to find Mr. K without success. I wanted to thank him personally for giving me a chance. As a student, I was fascinated by the work being done by a young second year surgery resident, Dr. Joel Noble, a brilliant PhD MD with whom I had worked in the clinical areas at Pennsylvania Hospital. I was impressed by Joel's passion for people, by his caring nature, and by his ability to put the patient at ease during the most intensive bedside procedures. I was likewise fascinated by the research that he was doing in the area of resuscitation. Joel developed the Max Crash Cart, a cardiopulmonary resuscitation system that drastically cut the number of clinical staff needed to start critical life support. The cart was introduced in Time and Life magazines, and 600 units were sent to hospitals around the country. That was a huge number for that time. I had the privilege of working with Joel on the placement of the resuscitative drugs at the head of the Gurnier crash cart. While I admired his patient communication skills, he admired my ability to engage with patients, and he gave me a chance, as well as a commitment to lifelong learning. Joel was my mentor, and we remained friends until he passed. Years later, when I was working as a night nurse in a community hospital in Florida, in the emergency department, or ER, I was careful about accounting for inventory, ensuring quality, and correct documentation, as well as good patient care. Dr. William Udaly, the vice president of multiple departments, including pharmacy, materials management, and others, must have noticed my diligence and compassion for others. When he had approval to start an infusion therapy team, he asked me to serve as team coordinator. He arranged for an intensive training program with the anesthesia department, and he worked side by side with me to create the type of a program of which we were both proud. He gave me a chance, as well as the start of a successful career in infusion therapy. Although that was many years ago, Bill Udaly and I are still good friends and professional colleagues. We all deserve a chance. Who gave you a chance and transformed your life in the process? And perhaps a better question to ask is, to whom have you given a chance?